Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Adventures in Careerland. Hi, everyone. I'm Adriano Magnifico. I'm the career consultant and entrepreneurship facilitator in the Lure Real School Division. And we are back with season three. This is episode number 12. And we just keep cruising along with all these interesting people in our podcast. This is Adventures in Career Land. Our goal is to help youth and anyone thinking about life or career pathing think about possibilities. So we talk to people who have been down that path, who have thought about gee, I wonder what I should try. I wonder if I'll try this. And this is what I'm going to do here. Here's the call I'm going to make here. And we found that these podcasts are pretty inspirational. We use them all over the place in our classes in Louis Real School Division. And people just listen to them from what I've noticed, both sides of the border. People in the United States are listening to this crazy podcast and uh, very appreciative. So the eight or nine people that listen to it, we're very appreciative. And uh, we're going to have a great guest again. And we're always ably assisted by our broadcast media production team. The broadcast media production team is in the Louis Riel Arts and Tech Center. It's one of those 13 programs in apprenticeship and applied learning. And in this program, you learn a lot of things about how to run a podcast and really how to find a job and build the skills that are connected to the broadcast and the media industries in Manitoba and beyond. A lot of people get hired in a lot of very cool jobs when they finish this program. One of these people, our producer, we have two of them, Akira, but he's gone to Cuba. Lucky Akira, gone to Cuba. But Zoe Kruzak is here. How are you, Zoe? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm I'm always good. I'm always happy to lark because you're part of the team. And Zoe's going the extra mile today because she's not feeling well. She got up and sent me notes saying, I'm not doing so well. I, I, I don't think I can be a part of this, but she is a trooper. She is one of those broadcast media students who says the show must go on, Zoe. So how are you feeling? And, and uh, are you OK doing this? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm definitely better than I was this morning, which is always good. Yeah, I, I feel a little kind of uh, sniffle in your throat. Do you have a bit of a cold? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Make sure you get a lot of rest. But for this 30 minutes, you got to be in your toes because we have a great guest. This is one of the this is this is an incredible guest, a guest from the past. She's looking at her watch. I can see her. And she is a busy person and she's consented to be with us from Halifax. That's in Canada. Halifax is uh, one of those wonderful, wonderful capital cities in Canada. And she was a part of the career internship program in Winnipeg, Manitoba at Windsor Park Collegiate. So it is with great pleasure that we welcome our guest for this episode, Stephanie Avery. Stephanie, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank You're you. You're doing very well. Oh, happy I'm to so, be here. I, oh, and we're so happy to have you. And she's uh, broadcasting from her car because she uh, she lives in her car and is uh, is homeless. <laughs> so it's uh, no, she's <laughs> not. No, she's not. But she's coming to her car because she's a very busy person. She's actually taking time out of her schedule. She works for Bell Alliance in Nova Scotia. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But Stephanie, I remember you from way back, 2011. You were a grad and you were that student. I remember when I was recruiting, you were that kind of student. I thought this is perfect for the program. You've never really thought about what should life look like after high school? And I'm all about that as a career facilitator, thinking about what are the possibilities? And I remember you saying to me just how how bored you were with high school. Talk a little bit about your high school experience and why you were attracted to that program and what it did for you. Yeah, I think that the main things that I struggled with in high school was I, I was smart and I was able to do, do well in classes. However, I didn't see kind of like the purpose of it and where I would apply it um, after school. So I was busy just like you mentioned earlier, I was hanging out with my friends in between families um, like my mom and my dad, different houses. And then like none of the courses really stood out to me as something that I would pursue long term. Um, with the career internship program, that one kind of did because it's see it for success and life skills that you can transfer through any different career that you you take on really. So I, I did very well in that program and that kind of changed the trajectory um I would say of, of my future really. 
Well, and that's that that's a good point for you because you're feeling kind of bored. When you're bored and you're not in that mode of what should I do next and you're just you're just subsisting and going from class to class, you're not doing any deeper thinking. Did the career internship program get you in that mode of I'm going to do some deeper thinking about who I am and where I should be going? Oh, absolutely. Throughout like the whole course, whether it was like reading different books or I did so many internships there and got my I just got my feet wet in so many different programs. And it was it was a really good um, experience for me. Do you remember a couple of those internships? Do you want to tell us about one? Um, I remember I did. I did one with the Manitoba Moose, uh, the Duha group that led to an actual like paid job for a bit. I I think the blueprint group was one of them if that's the right name um yeah there's just a whole bunch of i i centralia i did some work there when they were in there there's just a, a lot of different experiences and i was able to like just see what the real world was like outside of of school yeah i like that because we talk about in this podcast always collecting your dots and i remember you were almost a go-to person for me. Hey, we need you in Centralia. Centralia was this worldwide exhibition. You remember it, right? Where uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the World Trade Center would invite all these countries to Winnipeg to broker deals. And you were a volunteer yeah. in that. And uh, what did those guys, that was a big dot for me, for you, because those dots are the ones where your eyes get open. How did your eyes get open at a place like Centralia, where you're with you're with hundreds, almost thousands of people who are there to broker deals at the RBC Convention Center. How Can you recall those moments when you're going through that? What was that like? Yeah, I was thinking about a lot of this today and last night. Um, that experience in particular, my role when I got there was to sit people at the right tables. That was the role I was supposed to do. And then immediately when I got there, I was working with the facilitator and was not doing any of that. I was running around doing anything that she asked me to do, but it was nothing that I was assigned to do originally. I became her go-to person, kind of the same way you said I was your go-to person. Um, And that experience, I think, has really shaped my like career and my personality as it is now because I'm always wanting to be that go-to person. I want to be the person people rely on. I want to be seen as that person. And that's kind of what motivates me as an individual to do a good job and to progress is just being that go-to person that everybody can rely on and knows I'm going to get the job done right. Well, and that's an awesome thing you're saying because no one's going to ask you to do things unless you demonstrate the behaviors that say it's going to get done. So when you're going through school, getting your 60, 70, 80 percent, you're kind of meandering through there. Then when you go to Centralia, it's a different level of engagement it's a different level of i'm going to score you differently you don't get a numerical mark you get you get something different you get chosen you get you get asked to do some pieces i remember you being that go-to person and you were running all over weren't you running all all, all over the event but also weren't you running outside around the city (laughs) buying gifts by getting things for different people you were buying clothes for people because people were coming from all over it was amazing right people were coming from all over the world to winter in Winnipeg and some were ill-prepared. Do you remember buying scarves and all those things and getting them? Do you remember that stuff? Yep. Just whatever, whatever they needed, I was doing, but it was super fun. And I love that. And that's why I'm in my car right now. Like <laughs> just wherever I need to go, I go. I love it. And so that's why that sense of, I love what you're saying. I want to be the go-to person. So now you finish high school and the traditional path in high school is I better go get some education, right? And the guidance counselors are telling you, and you were the outstanding person in that program. I remember awarding you that award. We gave you the outstanding person and you were just an average kid. Did you ever imagine that you could achieve at that level in high school before that program? No, no. And it wasn't like, it was, like I said earlier, it wasn't that I wasn't like intelligent enough to do it. It was no, just that no, I wasn't no. good enough to do it. But I, I just needed the right motivation and the right drive and, this just school wasn't doing it for me, but that program definitely did because it was it was more outside of school. It wasn't just within the four walls of your school. That's an interesting thing then. So if you were if you were to reshape school a bit, if you were to change the system a bit, what would you wish for every student then based on your experience? Just to get out in the world more and experience more things because you don't know what you like or what motivates you or what you want until you actually go out and try different things. That's right. And so Zoe, um, uh, Zoe's on the uh, our, our producer here. 
Zoe's in this program that does what you're doing. Zoe, talk to Stephanie a little bit about some of the things you've done lately in the broadcast media program that have shaped some of your mindset and sensibility. Can you recall one quickly? Well, basically all of our sporting events have because we go out in small groups and we have to figure out like if make sure, well we have to make sure everything's going to work if there's anything wrong like we have to figure it out and we have to do like whatever we have to do basically in order to fix it or um, when I was working for Dome last week or people for TSN and the Jets and stuff um, I was I was running around helping people trying to figure out their problems carrying like carrying cables and what they needed and I mean that's that was a great experience to basically like shape like my career in the future basically well what did you learn from that zoe that's interesting because it's the same as steph steph went to centralia it opened her eyes but you went you also went to duha and it'll duha makes colors right tell us what duha is stephanie um so i went to duha they their big thing was lean manufacturing um the company itself they create colors so if you go it's for paint chips basically so someone will make the paint um and then they need to make the paint swatches to match the paint color but it's not going on a wall it's going on a piece of paper so the the way that they have to do is completely different and they have to design it which is a really cool process and while i was there i was doing an internship with like human resources so i wrote a lot of their policies and i worked just beside the human resource um, manager throughout and I did an internship but it turned into being a paid job throughout the summer afterwards as well. Yeah, I recall that. They loved you there. Uh, so that, that that's another eye opener. Lean manufacturing. Did you ever hear of that before? I hadn't, no. So that's pretty cool. And now that's that's enormous, right? Every organization yeah, wants to be lean, right? It's standard. Bell wants to be lean. A hospital wants to be lean. Uh, Duha is a leader in lean. Zoe, when you were going to yours, was it was it eye opening like that? Like, think about, OK, I'm at I'm with Dome. I'm doing this real work. What did you take from that for your next kind of movement? Well, it gave me like actual experience in the industry and like it actually opened my eyes to see like how much work is actually behind like all of these productions and what I need to do in order to like fit in with everyone and make sure everything goes smoothly and stuff. It's like it was a great experience. Good for you. And you have something cool to put on your resume. Hey, you guys also figure out that you can't hand in a paper and get a C on it, right? When you're out there at Centralia, you can't run and be this advisor to the the, per, the person running all the tables with all these meetings and say, I got it partly done. Is that OK? Are you OK with a C? You can't do that, right? Like, what's the level you guys had to work at? You're, can you speak about that? Yeah, Steph, me personally, ahead. like, my, yeah, me personally, I'm constantly running at like top level um and i i do this in the program i've done this in careers i'm always volunteering to do extra work and putting myself out there to demonstrate that i will return the, the work with an a grade every time and then for like anybody that's going into careers just doing that constantly will help you in your career path no matter what um so just make sure yeah always always top notch handy assignments and Zoe, how did you feel about, hey, I can make some mistakes here or uh, or it's got to be top notch? Well, I was honestly kind of scared to make mistakes just because I was in like this new environment that yes. I don't know. Like, I know they're expecting a lot from me in order for them to invite me back and whatever. So, like, it was kind of stressful. I did what I was told. I don't think I made any mistakes because no one pointed anything out, at least. So well, that's good. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Steph, you came, you went. The beaten path was I better go to school. So you went to school. You went to the University of Winnipeg after high school. After all these great experiences, what did you discover? Yeah, it was just like school for me. <laughs> they didn't have a career internship program there. So I was just back in school, <laughs> dawdling around, not really knowing what my purpose was. And what were you taking there? The University of Winnipeg does year one. I can't remember exactly all the courses I did, but they just let you sample um, some courses. I don't even know if it's the same anymore as it was 10 years ago. I know I took accounting, um, just an intro to business, uh, economics course. Uh, Why I, did I think that's... I did psychology. But you're in business. Everything. But you're in business now, right? Yep. You're a business person. So why didn't the education of business connect to what you're doing? What's the missing link there? There was nothing to connect it to at the time. So I was, what do you there mean? was there was no end goal. Like I didn't know where where I was going to take that. It didn't translate. I 
like even now I will go and read business papers that I would have read in school, but they now like affect me and they translate to my job and my career now. Or when I was in school, it's just, there was, I didn't have a job lined up. I didn't know what I would be using or when I'd be using it. It was just that, that motivation wasn't there for me. Yeah. So it was just silos of information you were gathering and it wasn't connected yeah. to you. So you need to feel that connection. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That makes sense. So you kind of left it after a year. You yep. left university after a year. And where did you go after that? Um, so I worked for MTS. And like, I will always, I, I will go back to school if I ever want to. Like, that's not a of total write-off. Um, but I did leave after the first year, worked for MTS there for a couple of years. And then I moved to Scotland for two years. Now, hold it. The MTS stuff, were you in a call center kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So tell me, this is this will be fun. What was the dumbest call you ever got? At a call I can't center? remember that. <laughs> I like, can't remember you, that. Did, well, did you get a couple of dumb calls there? There's a lot of call? dumb calls. So Absolutely. What would be, so what would be the generic dumb call you're getting? Um, we had a lot of people call in just, you could probably predict just for their bill. Um, one of them, for instance, if people were calling in with a bill question, um, we had a lot of people call in saying that they paid their bill, but they had like charges on it. It turns out the charges were credits from them overpaying their bill. So it said like CR in front of it. So it was a credit of say $2 um, and they would think that's a charge. So I'm going to explain that they just paid the extra $2. It's a little bit silly sometimes. Did people ever just call to talk? Yeah, elderly people usually do. They're lonely. Oh, that's nice. And and yeah. did you treat them great? Yeah, for like yeah. a minute or two. <laughs> for like a minute or two, and then you got to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean you're on the dime all the time, right? Were people pushing you? How? What kind of pressure is a call center, and what did that build in you? Call center, um, they would measure handle time, uh, break time how long you're taking to write your notes. Um, the biggest thing I took from the call center was just how to talk to people though. Cause a lot of times they'd sit you down in a room with your call coach and you would put on headphones and sit beside your call coach and listen to your call with your customer. So it really like made you think about how you talk to other people. And a lot of people don't realize how they talk to people in the moment. Yes, and just sitting yes. down and listening to how you're talking to people is like eye opening. Wouldn't that be invaluable for everyone to do? Oh, absolutely. And right now, like, I, I, I'm i not managing in a store anymore. But when I was, I'd have to pull people aside and be like, hey, this is the conversation you just had. Like, doesn't sound great. <laughs> could just be the tone. Could be the yeah. words. But people don't realize the tone that they have all the time. Yeah, tone's a lot, right? I, I, I just saw a study that said, you know, the physical part of you, the body movement is huge. But the tone of your voice is enormous. You could be standing still, but your voice tone can can really communicate something you don't want it to communicate. So that's pretty cool. So you're doing that for a while. You go to Scotland. Why in the world are you going to Scotland? Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> I have some friends out there uh, that live there, and I got a two year working visa to go out there. You can do that if you're under 35. So I just took advantage of that because why not? It was kind of like joining the career, the SIP program because it's available to me and I can. So why not just do it and see what happens? And yeah, it was super, super fun. So what, yeah. did, so, so what did you learn in Scotland? Because they talk like this, you know, so it's, it's a bit of a <laughs> different place. <laughs> I learned so. how to understand them. Yep. <laughs> that was part of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what did you take from that experience? You're living there for two years. Did you work? Yeah. So there I worked for Vodafone, which is a phone company as well. Uh, I really learned there just how to create your own social circle and people to depend on because you have that normally when you grow up you have that and you maintain that throughout your life but when you're across the world and you only have a couple of friends you really need to build that up again you need to get mentors and friends oh, and people awesome. that you trust so that's a great point. That's the biggest so, thing I learned there that's awesome so do you still keep in touch with your with, with your school and people yes some of them yeah yep. absolutely yep Oh, that's pretty cool. And were they work people or did you just branch out and go find people to connect with? A little bit of everything. Yeah. See, that's amazing. So the Scotland thing, Scotland's beautiful landscape. Did you take advantage of all that? Yeah. So lots of, well, around Scotland and then even just flying around Europe, there's lots of places to visit that were cheap to visit uh, by plane because Europe. So I went to Italy. You'd be ah, familiar with that. <laughs> I fatto bene. I fatto bene. That's good. No, that's beautiful. So what was your favorite place in Europe? Uh, probably Amsterdam. Why? It's, go it's <laughs> not gorgeous. Not the reasons there. you're thinking. Yeah. I know, and I'm, I'm not thinking that. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, um, get your head out of the gutter. We're not. Thinking <laughs> <that>. <laughs> uh, 
But what was no, it about it Because it's, it's a beautiful city. It's beautiful. The people there are amazing. Everybody is very down to earth, very welcoming, very friendly. The, the, like, just the way, like, bikes are set up there, I find crazy. I would love for our traffic to work like that and to have bike traffic the way that they do. It would be very nice. So did you, so did you drive a car everywhere. out there? Or, or did, you, oh, no. did you ride a bike? Bikes all the time. I walked or bus. You didn't ride a bike? No. Are you a biker? I am now. Okay, good, good, good. Anyway, you could have done it down there. Man, I would have done all that like crazy. That's pretty cool. So so the Scotland, I just love your journey here because everything's an experience you're taking in and you're gleaning from it and moving on and bringing. So your Scotland experience, what did you bring to Halifax? Because you're in Halifax. When you left Scotland, then you came to Halifax because your dad lives there? My dad lives two hours away from Halifax, but close enough that he's around. Okay. He's, awesome. he's going to have my pants for me this weekend. Well, that's nice. <laughs> That's yeah. Great. Okay. So then you're you join is that when you joined Bell Alliance when you come to Halifax? Yeah. And how long how long have you been there? Uh, four years. Four years. That's a long time. Ish. And you are in. You did you start out in a call center again? No, I started in a store as a sales rep. So you go in to buy TV, internet, or a cell phone. That was me. I would sell you what you wanted, and I'd sell you stuff you didn't know you wanted. <laughs> That's the cost of its sales. Part person. of the job. That's, that's part of the job. I didn't know I needed this 2,000-inch TV. Oh, you do. You do. Exactly. <laughs> You'll be the only one in the block without it. Anyway, no, no, that's pretty cool. So you built this sales experience. And what are you doing now at Bell Alliance? Yeah, so I kind of climbed up the ladder like crazy fast. Uh, and I attribute that to all of the previous experience that I had with high school and Scotland and everything. Um, I'm very like impressed with how quickly I've done it. Honestly, not trying to like. Good for you. I'm impressed. Crazy. I'm impressed. Too. I'm impressed um, too. But yeah, so went from sales rep um, to edit, like kind of like a it was a training program for manager, and then into assistant manager, into a manager role, into a top tier manager role, and now I'm I have 21 locations that I support throughout Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Uh, so I'm always on the go, and I just help the store managers and their reps with all things that do with Bell Alliant Home Services. So TV, internet, home phone, um, alarm systems, and then small business for mobility as well. So huge network of people I have now. So I mean huge. this with great affection. So you're a bit of a computer geek or is that? No. No, you're just a communications <laughs> geek. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Teams was a struggle for me. <laughs> okay, so there's still a struggle. So computers, do you have trouble with computers? Like, because isn't that part of the gig there? Aren't you selling I'm really laptops good with, and stuff? Like, no, just just like internet, okay. TV, internet, home phone, just the service, not the not the product that you would use for it. Uh, right so I'm really good with using my email <laughs> and like <laughs> Microsoft oh. Office. Oh, and that's very good. I'm really good with WhatsApp, and that's those are my those best are your things. Go-tos. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I'm a technological guru now speaking with you and, yeah. I, and, uh, and I'm an idiot with tech. Oh my gosh. They Kevin, I have people like Zoe. I'm telling you this Zoe and Akira is not here in this broadcast media program. They learn how to use the Adobe suite. Zoe, t t talk about the tech, you know, um, the Adobe suites. Those are like editing softwares. So like the main ones we use are like After Effects, which is like we create, we can create like little animations and just like make things look really cool and stuff. Um, we use like Photoshop, uh, Premiere Pro, which is a, another video editing thing. It makes it a lot easier to like cut in between clips and like scatter them around and stuff. And that's fun. And one of my favorites is Audition. And like that's what I use to edit Careerland. It's like super simple. You can see where all the breaks are and it's, it's really fun. See, and, and that's amazing uh, that she's young. You're from St. Anne, Manitoba. And where's that special school you're from? What do you call it? Point de Point de She's French too. So she she's going to bring that skill set as she embarks on what you did, Steph. That complete video editing, know how to use these this 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 family of software, which is really cool. I'm really I'm really lucky to have her and Akira on this podcast working with me all the time. So that's pretty cool. So I just like to say that I'm also also young. <laughs> That's right. You are young. Okay. Yeah, that, that's right. Why did I imply you're a hundred years old? You said she's young. Me too. Just not as okay. young. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's a high school kid. You're young too. Yeah, okay. High school is young to me. Anything else is, I don't know. Anyway, I remember old things though. 
do you have any dogs or cats or anything like that? Do you? Uh, I have a cat. Yeah. A cat? One cat. So you're a cat person. I would have a dog if I could. It's just I don't have the time. I can leave a cat for a couple of days. Yeah, or a couple of weeks. Is there a yeah. cat here? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> oh, look at a little scrawny. Oh, I'll get her something. Anyway, I, I I love this. So tell us what you do. Like when you when you think of the alliance thing and you're moving up the 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 kind of I don't know. People talk about a ladder, but is it really a ladder? Or are you just moving into different positions? Uh, that are giving you more responsibility. Do you like that sense of responsibility? Oh, yeah, I love it. I like thrive for it. Every time I get a job, like a new role, I'm looking for the next one. When I applied for the role I have now, this is, I'm in my second week, third week maybe of this role, so it's new. Oh, good. Um, oh, good. But when I applied for it, I actually asked somebody, my boss at the time, I said, hey, like, do you think they're going to laugh if I apply for the, the role? And then I ended up getting the role. So, well, that's awesome. So do you like yeah. working with people? Do you like working with a team and directing the team? I like working with people and building relationships. Um, in terms of like directing, I would feel like that sounds a little bit bossy from my end. Um, like I definitely do help direct the team, but I like to build a relationship with a team and then all kind of go together. I don't just like oh. telling them what to do, but kind of showing them how to do it and offering support. I have my phone on constantly, and everybody knows they can reach me at any time if they need. Okay, well, that's interesting. I guess they're between stores all the time. So how important is it to build trust with all of your relationships? Oh, it is so important. I've talked about this constantly. Building trust is, like, the number one thing. You need trust before you can establish anything. And it, in any job, Bell, for example, as you're, if, if you're a sales rep, you need your customer to trust you before they'll buy something from you. If you're a manager, you need your reps to trust you before they're going to buy into what you're telling them to do. If in my role, I need the managers to trust me before they're going to listen to me, because if they don't trust me, they aren't going to think I know what I'm talking about. So trust, and no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether it's work, family, friends, trust is like key for everything. Well, that's awesome. And, and that's well said. And that's the most difficult thing. Like you have that sense about you though, that you've always been such an approachable person. Even when I would give you crazy things back in high school, I overloaded you. Do you remember those days? I, cause I thought, oh, here's a go-to kid. As soon as I figured out, here's a kid who will get something done. I start throwing things at, 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 at students like you. I remember you being overloaded. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, I think it's good though, that I did and was, and I, I feel like I always am now, but I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Me, and it was personally. good. And my point about that is, it's not that it was a bad thing. My point is that how well you took it and how well you began to manage it. I was never, you're one of the people that I've worked with over time that, my gosh, this person, for a young person, uh, <laughs> how well you were able to manage things at a young age and continue in this another level of youngness that you're in, youth. <laughs> how well you seem to manage it. <laughs> a decade, I know. Anyway. That's pretty cool. Hey, if you were to talk to some grade 11 or 12 students and you, you were popping in there 10 years later, based on what you've done, what would you tell them? You're, you're in front of the room and say, you know, what? I'm going to give you a couple of pieces of sage advice. Here they are. What is it? Well, I would just tell them to try everything, like everything they possibly can, because you never know what's going to spark that motivation in you. So if you're on the path of, I don't know, being a dentist, that's great. But Maybe try painting a photo one time or try doing some broadcasting just to get your feet in a couple different doors and, and like I said, see what motivates you because you don't really know until you get out there. And I didn't know until I got out and tried. I was at some points where I was doing four or five different jobs with volunteer work and everything, but you, you like I said, you just don't know. You have to get out there and try things. And that's career-wise, hobby-wise, I guess friends, family, everything. Oh, that's awesome. And you know what? You're a real testimony to how the school system should change and how programs like the Career Internship Program should be uh, more prevalent in, 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 in education, period, because you needed to see the connection between your schoolwork and what was going on outside. And you've embraced that and you've taken it. I'm so proud of you, Stephanie. It's amazing. I think you've just done fantastic. Thank you. Oh, I'm just I'm just so proud of you. Uh, listen, you know what? This is pretty Zoe, are you ready? We're gonna do the whip it round. Are you ready, uh, Zoe? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, Stephanie, this has been so lame, this whole exercise of our whip it round. So I invite you to answer as quick as you can. And we've been trying to get this right. So Zoe, I hope you got a lot of great questions for Steph and you have to answer them quickly. So don't, don't do too much thinking. 
Sometimes <laughs> the whip it round goes to heck when we get involved in discussions. That's not what the whip it rounds around. We're just trying to whip it like the crack of a whip. That's how quick the answer's got to be. All right. So Zoe, go ahead. The floor is yours. All right. So yeah, like you said, just answer the questions as fast as you can. And yeah, <laughs> so we'll start with what's your favorite holiday movie? Elf. Uh, do you like Hallmark movies? Yes. And what kind of car do you have? Uh, mint Chevy Spark. Uh, DC or Marvel? Marvel. What type of phone do you have? Uh, Samsung Flip. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. What do you like on your toast? Butter. Uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, we'll go with green. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Uh, what's your favorite TV channel? I don't watch TV. And what's your favorite location in the world? Um, let's say Halifax. And what's your cat's name? O'Malley. And you just got whooped. Got whooped. That was it. That, that was, was pretty good then. It was good. That, honestly, that was one of the best ones you've ever done. Zoe, well done. And some new Thank questions. You. I'm melting <laughs> here at the dexterity and thought process of Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. That was good. So, Stephanie, I really appreciate you being part of this. So, how no this works is, you, I, I'm wearing the cool shirt. Do you see this? It says Adventures in Careerland. So, next time you're in town, I will give you one of these shirts. I don't mail them out. It just It's going to force you to spend thousands of dollars to come and visit. It's All very right. expensive and very covety, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, for the $20 shirt. I, I think it's worth it. Anyway, we're so glad you were on this program. I'm so glad I connected with you. I haven't seen you for how long? 10 years. I, may, 10 maybe years. since grad, right? Yeah. That's amazing. So I'm just so happy with how things are going for you. I love your sense of ambition. And I love your sense of how you're developing into a person that just connects to the trustworthiness of being human and making sure that's the priority. I love that. I love what you said. So, hey, so glad you're part of this. Uh, Zoe, thanks very much for doing this. And Akira, I'm sure you're going to listen to this one day. Uh, enjoy your time in Cuba. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it for another edition of Adventures in Careerland.